Hello and welcome to the Critic Eculus. Today we are in Mountain Blade to Banner Lords. And in today's video, it's going to be about why it is beneficial to become a vassal and what that enables. Like, what exactly do you get from that? What are the perks? What are the cons? We're going to be talking about all the benefits and the good things about becoming a vassal within Mountain Blade to Banner Lord. And if that's the kind of content you want to see, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss out on more videos just like this. As we are posting daily videos at the moment on Banner Lords, specifically made for console players. And for anyone that is unfamiliar with this concept, I guess we should start with what exactly it is. Or what exactly does it mean by becoming a vassal? Well, basically... You are pledging your allegiance to one of the already established kingdoms within the continent. Now, you can join up with any kingdom um, in the continent of your choice. It really is up to you um, and, you know, what, it, what you guys actually prefer. There is no right answer as to who you should join up with. As you can see, we are looking at the Valandians right here. This is the, uh, this is the kingdom that I'm going to be joining up for you guys. But I'd really like to add that there really are no right options or wrong options. It really is about you, your play style, what you're doing in your game, how you want to do it. There's no one um, kingdom greater than the other. They all have their benefits. They all have their weaknesses. So play your game when it comes to who you should be joining up with. But hopefully by the end of this video, you guys have got a bit more of an understanding about what exactly it is your gain from joining up with one of the already established kingdoms on the map. Okay, so the first requirement is pretty simple, really. The first requirement is to get your clan to clan tier level 2. Once you finally unlock clan tier level 2, and you can do this pretty early on in the game, you can then officially join up with a kingdom. Bear in mind, if you have bad relations with one of the kingdoms that you want to join up with, then they're probably not going to want to have you on board. However, if you've established a good name, you have a positive relationship with the kingdom, then you're able to join up. However, you do have to hit clan tier level 2. If you don't hit clan tier level 2, that option will be greyed out for you and you won't be able to join them. Now, your next step is to identify the kingdom that you want to join up with. Um, if you try and pledge allegiance with just anybody, they will tell you that you they will not be able to do this. You will have to seek out the leader um, of the kingdom that you want to join. So use your encyclopedia if you're not sure who the kingdom is. Don't forget, you can also track the leader so you can find them on the map and just... You know, because sometimes they're not chilling at home, unfortunately. They could very well be waging war. So use the encyclopedia, find out wherever the leader um, actually is, and then go seek out a word with them. If you do happen to have a negative relation with the kingdom that you do want to join, you can improve this, of course, by doing little missions for their lords, indicated by the blue icon by their face. But if you're in a positive relationship and you have found the king that you want to serve under, all you have to do is declare your interest in joining their service. You would then have an option to either for the right price or to pledge allegiance. Now, your lord will tell you a few things to repeat it's kind of the computer's way of confirming that this is the choice that you want to take now there's a number of these they will ask you to repeat a, you know a number of things and this is all to make sure that you are absolutely sure that you are doing the right thing the thing that you want to do because once you enter this breaking this oath you know going against your word will not be looked on favorably by the kingdom or the lords within the kingdom so keep that in mind guys becoming a vassal is a huge step in this game and you know we are talking about a game that relies on honor relies on the relationships with other lords so if you break your word it isn't going to be looking pretty for you However, once you've confirmed all those juicy things and sweared fealty to your new lord, 
then you get a few little treats as well. So not only do you get the benefit of becoming part of one of the already established kingdoms, but you also get some treats. And as you can see, even in our pants, our new king is only too happy to allow us to join him. Anyway, moving swiftly on to the treats. So once you join up, of course, this is faction related, but you do actually get a few of the top tier troops of that faction, um, which can be really good. Some of these troops that you actually get are extremely hard to get. It takes a long time to actually level up if you were to train them up yourself. So having access to these top tier troops is pretty cool. A nice little bonus, as you see, I joined up with Valandia. So I got a Valandian champion and a few Valandian knights. So obviously they slot quite nicely into my army. I also got a rather nice sword and a brand new banner as well. Now, if you already have a better sword or a better weapon, because don't forget this is faction related, then of course you could just go ahead and sell these items. Either way, I think early game is a really nice little earner. Even if you just sell those weapons, they're worth a tidy little price. And of course, being part of a kingdom means you have the backing and the power of a kingdom as well. So when they go to war, you can go to war with them earning a ton of money. War is very profitable in this game and a great way to, you know, fatten your purse. Of course, remember, just because your kingdom have gone to war doesn't mean you have to. And if you don't happen to have thieves and towns at that time, then it may not be in your best interest to go ahead and do that. And don't forget, guys, influence is key here. Once you join the kingdom, you'll have access to influence. It will build up gradually, but it will take a little while in order for you to get enough influence to start swaying your kingdom this way or that especially when it comes to who gets what who will get for instance the castle or the town that has just been taken over by your kingdom you'll also now have access to armies remembering if you use your own party members for armies it will be influence free but you can also recruit the kingdom's lords to your parties or to your armies as well on top of that, with your newfound influence, you'll also be able to enact policies and, of course, request to go to war. However, hey, guys, I must remind you of the oath you swore when you joined the kingdom, because if you leave, yes, you can absolutely take any towns and any castles that you may have got. But that means instant war. Not only that, if you was to leave and allow that kingdom to keep those castles and towns, well, that still doesn't guarantee that they're not going to go to war with you and they will still look not so kindly on you for breaking your word in the first place. Remember, at the very beginning, you swear a solemn oath. Breaking it means all those relationships that you've managed to build up are going to tank a little bit. Now, I'm certainly not saying don't join up, build up your castles and then leave anyway. Just that bear in mind going into this, as you can see right here at the top of the screen, a lot of the relationships that you build up are going to tank. So before you do leave, make sure you remember that and maybe max out a few of those relationships prehand because you can still leave with good relationships with a few of the lords. It just takes a little bit of time. However, little tip, if you do end up leaving, taking your castles with you, going to war against the uh, kingdom that you was with, and you still have those positive relations, well, if you've got money in your bank, of course, you can um, ask them to join you for a small price. Little tip, high charm will help with this. But guys, that is just about it for all of my tips and tricks when it comes to why you should join up as a vassal. Personally speaking, I think it is the easiest way to get a town, the easiest way to get castles um, in the game. You get access to castles and towns so early by joining up as a vassal than you would going at your own or trying to make your own kingdom from scratch. I hope this video has been useful to you. If it has, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to comment your thoughts on this video as well or any tips that you happen to have. 
And we also have an active and growing Discord. The link for that will be down in the description and it'd be great to see more of you inside the Discord. But until next time, I've been a monk who's been a see clueless and I will see you in the next video real soon. Until then, take it easy and happy gaming.